right, guys. So I've I've done quite a lot here recently. I didn't want to film it just because some of it's boring and it takes forever. And honestly, uh, this motor swap project has been uh, more than I anticipated. So there's a topic I found online that is kind of hotly discussed, but I couldn't find a lot of info on it. And it's swapping a four liter. It's the uh, uh, six cylinder or uh, yeah inline six four liter uh, Chrysler motor from a ZJ or WJ uh, or actually from a WJ into an XJ Cherokee so it's a Grand Cherokee into a Cherokee the and I want to go over some of the differences because I have both vehicles here you know at my disposal I can see easily you know compare and I'm going to show you guys some of those uh, comparisons and uh, go over the one issue that I'm running into. And I think we're going to be able to solve it pretty easily. So let's get started. All right, guys. So I've got the, as you can see here, there's the motor. That motor is a 4 liter that came out of a 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, the, the Jeep Grand Cherokees have a different transmission. Uh, I think it's like a 4-speed automatic or whatever. Uh, then they have the clutch based all wheel drive transfer cases stuff like that But I'm going to show you guys the so the the way that the serpentine belt is set up how the AC compressor and alternator placements are different But that wasn't really a big issue to me. It's mostly the motor mounts uh, And there's on both the driver and passenger side mounts I had to make some modifications on the driver's side that were easy and now I'm going to have to make some more difficult modifications to the passenger side in order to get this motor to, uh, to fit up. So we're going to go in and look at the passenger side of the Jeep first. So on a WJ 4 liter out of the 2002 WJ, they have a long rail here with coil packs. And there is no distributor. I had to add this distributor off of the old motor. I will have to pull it, unseat it a little bit. It's kind of loose. I left it loose a little bit. I'm going to have to unseat it. You have to time the motor. You have to put it at top dead center. I'll have to put a bolt down here. It's 19 millimeters. I'll have to time the motor. Then seat this in. Um, that was just in there to keep water and, and moisture out of, out of that hole. This seats into the camshaft. Um, so you'll have to swap over from a coil pack and distributor list design to, you know, distributor. And, and then you'll have to make a, a little bracket here for the coil pack. Um, so that, that's kind of some modifications that you have to make. On an XJ, in this spot where the alternator is on the ZJ or the WJ uh, 4 liter, this is where the AC compressor is. As you can see, there's very little clearance here between the battery and the alternator. Um, I actually, I'm going to try to move this battery over just a little bit, but um, I wanted, I actually liked this configuration because on an XJ, the alternator is at the bottom. It's always swimming in the water. So if you got a wheeling vehicle like this is going to be, having an alternator down at the bottom isn't a big deal, but it's just not a great thing. The other thing is, is this is capped off for um, uh, the WJ came with a fan and a big shroud, a much bigger radiator. This XJ has a very small radiator compared to a WJ. And I actually have the WJ radiator. I might either make some modifications to the XJ to use that. Um, power steering pump, I noticed exact same pump, exact same hookups. That should be no problem. Down here is where the AC compressor is on the WJ 4 liter. I have totally disconnected it. So um, this, this AC compressor is only functioning as just a placeholder for the serpentine belt. Uh, and I'll probably get a delete kit for that. So yeah, the WJ I pulled it from was totally dry. So I just unhooked the hoses and uh, you know that's just, just going to be hanging out there. Um, you know, minor wiring differences. I didn't notice anything with the injectors. 
You know, all the injectors from the WJ4 liter should hook up to the XJ wiring harness. Um, all these little breather valves, I have to replace these, but they were good on the old motor. So I'll replace that. Let's talk about the bigger issue, which is the motor mounts. So it's still, this, this engine is still being held up by the engine hoist. You know, still tension on this. But here on the passenger side, these mounting holes do not line up. There's actually another, that was a little clip I'll get in a minute. On, on a XJ 4 liter, there's, a, there's more mounting holes over in this, in this area. Um, they're slightly different. Like this configuration is set up for the WJ. It has a totally different mounting bracket. I'll show that to you in a minute. Um, and it, they just, they will not fit. So what I'm going to have to do, and I'll show you those pieces, is I'm using the bracket, the, the factory uh, motor mount from the WJ 4 liter. I'm going to cut it and leave the holes, the bracket, just the holes. I'm going to weld on the, the XJ piece to fit right over that. Because I have the motor sitting pretty much where I want it. I've got it all hooked up. The flywheel um, and the bell housing bolts were all the same. So that was easy to put in. Let's talk about the driver's side. It's easiest to show you down here. So this is looking from underneath the vehicle. So this is a factory XJ motor mount. This is not what came on this 4 liter from the WJ. And as you can see, I've got some bolts and washers in here. There is a motor mount bolt that fits over here on this. There's one, two, three motor mount bolts. Uh, these did not fit right. I had to get longer bolts. And then I used some half and five eighths inch uh, nuts and washers to space. And see, there's a little bit of room in there. I could probably wouldn't hurt to tighten that up just a pinch, but not too much. So that was a little bit easier to get that bracket to fit. But um, otherwise, it's been uh, getting the motor mount bolts and, and the motor mounts for the XJ to fit on here has been kind of a pain. As you can see, I was able to get it through without any issues. So that one's going to fit perfect. But what I wanted to show you is this is a factory passenger side motor mount this is the factory passenger side motor mount for the WJ as you can see they're totally different but this one was going to go to the scrapyard anyways I need this one because it mounts up to the factory and I didn't feel like a lot of people tap the block or something um, I'm just not very good at that. So what I'm going to do is I've already started cutting. I'm going to simply, I need these, these uh, motor mount, these bolt holes, this pattern here. So there's four bolts. I'm simply going to cut out around here and just leave this pattern. I'm going to weld a, a piece of steel here in the back, a plate. I'm going to cut around along here and then I'm gonna weld this plate to this plate and it'll be kind of like over in this over in this area um, I think it's gonna work perfect and I'm gonna kind of do weld it in place just tack weld it and then I'll have a buddy you know with a big welder weld it all up for me make sure it's nice and secure and then we'll be off to the races um, so just kind of using the stuff that I've already got. We'll see if a little bit of welding and some, uh, you know, hopefully some, a little bit of luck, we will get this to work. Hi right, guys, so I got done cutting. This is the old motor mount for the XJ. This is the old motor mount for the WJ. Goal is to weld a flat plate here and um, Hopefully, 
I'm gonna have to grind this down, this little edge here. But the idea will be to mount it somewhat like like that. I'm hoping that's what that's gonna allow me to do. So wish me luck. All right, guys. So I've uh, kind of had to take a break for a day. I didn't get to work on the Jeep much. But um, <clears throat> I was able to fab up a motor mount. So see if you can see what this is. So this is the, the Jeep WJ motor mount. I cut out the inside here. These are the XJ motor mounts for the passenger side. And of course, this is the passenger side motor mount for the, the WJ. This is just a piece of bar that I bought at the you know hardware store. Buying steel there sucks because it's expensive. So I've got a, a small piece of bar, then the motor mount, and then the motor mount here. I've just tack welded it. And, uh, but it works perfect. I'm hoping, you know, that, uh, we don't get any issues out of it. I think it's going to be good to go though. I'm, I'm very pleased with it so far. I didn't really measure any of it. I just kind of, you know, would stick it in there and stick to the, I cut a bar about this long, found that the bar was too long, cut it back a little bit. And then I would just kind of make a mark where my motor mounts needed to go. But um, I'm gonna have my buddy weld all this up real good. Hopefully it doesn't warp this plate because that's uh, that's gonna be terrible if it does. The whole thing will be. All right guys, this is the first live fire for the Jeep with the new motor. Um, I've got 90% of the stuff hooked up. I don't have any water in it. It's got oil. I'm only gonna test it to see if it's gonna crank and run for about five seconds. That's all I need, then I'll button everything else up. Uh, this has been the most complicated motor swap I've done yet. Um, you know, if you're just putting, you know, motor from same year model and the same motor type, like a lot of the Chevys that I own have 5.3 liter, I can take that 5.3 liter and dump it at any of those, you know, as long as they're similar year models, uh, without too many issues. Um, this, however, was it was a chore. There was, there's nowhere online that you can find. Oh yeah, this is the list of stuff that you need, and this is what's different. I'm going to give you guys the most complete list that I can come up with. I haven't totally documented everything, but. I'm gonna to try to come up with a really solid list of stuff that you will need to deal with when swapping a four liter engine from a, a WJ to an XJ. So just, just to start off, the motor mounts are not the same. The wiring harnesses are a little different, like the, the, the alternator, the little uh, positive wire, you know, you'll have to, the XJ wiring harness won't really fit on that you have to drill it out a little bit uh, the starters a little different um, the throttle position sensor you have to take the one off of the XJ and put it on here because the plugins are, are different um, I mean the the one thing that was nice power steering pump everything was the same that was great you know, of course, if you're running AC, I don't even want to get into that. The AC compressors are in completely different locations. You might have to rob parts. Um, I am going to show you the motor mount. It's complete. It's on the Jeep that I had to weld and fabricate for the passenger side. Uh oh, all right. So. A couple other things that are different that I totally forgot to mention. This is the coil pack. <laughs> this is not where this is supposed to be. But I just found a little bolt and a mounting hole 
and this is how I have it wired up. The ground mounts for the wiring harnesses for the XJ are different on the, the WJ, 4 liter. So I just found some places to, to you know, stick them on the motor. I'm not sure if there's like specific ground points. I figured just being on the block would be good enough. But there's multiple of those. I mean, there's there's a ground wire that's on this one down here. Um, the alternator, thankfully, the wiring matched up. So that was that was kind of plug and play. This I had to drill out the little. Um, so this little threaded rod here is larger than this uh, piece of the wiring harness. So I had to drill that out and make the hole bigger on that. That was. Um, you know, just lots of little stuff like that. Um, otherwise, hopefully it's going to work. So you guys are going to get to see the live test. I've got, I took, when I, I tested earlier to make sure it would turn over, and I pulled out the, the fuel relay. I have the fuel relay in. As you can see, I have no water in here. I'm not going to let it run very long. I still have to figure out how to get, do some cooling and everything in here. Um, I honestly wish that this was, the XJs were set up more like the WJs for cooling, just because I would love to run a giant electric fan in here and get rid of this stupid mech fan. But uh, I don't think that's gonna happen right now, unless I find some other interesting, you know, creative solution for that. So. All right, guys, I have an announcement. The Jeep runs. I'd almost given up. To be honest, this was, uh, it definitely, I had to read, I had to study. Um, I had to learn how to be consistent as far as, you know, mechanic wise like making sure you go through the process of checking double checking all your work and the reason it did not run was not like anything there was anything broken I might have had some ground wires misplaced and I got a lot of that stuff fixed um, I found a lot of wiring issues when I dug in and, and really started looking so that was good I did fix those but the real reason it wasn't running and I've spent so many days out here in the rain just trying to get this crazy thing to run is it was my fault I did not properly time the motor um, I thought I had it timed I was actually 180 degrees out or a stroke out so um, I remember last night I was like you know what when I timed it I didn't uh, like seat something into the spark plug hole to build pressure so on a compression stroke you'll hear this thump you'll hear this puff of air come out on a compression stroke. So I used, in order to time it, this time I, I had the distributor, the cap and rotor off. I just had the rotor button on and I knew where cylinder number one, where the the timing for the rotor button on cylinder number, number one was. It's right around four o'clock on these Jeeps. So I um, four, four or five o'clock if you look at a watch. And um, so I just rotated the motor over with the distributor in and I got to compression stroke and the friggin rotor button is facing up at 12 o'clock 
and I'm like, oh, well, it's never going to fire. And that's why I knew it was getting fuel. I knew it was getting spark. It just wouldn't run right. And I would just crank and crank and crank. And I was like, what's going on? But um, I finally, I got the timing set. It runs perfect. Now we've got just some little stuff. I've got to make sure all the cooling's good. Got to get the radiator fans in. I'm going to weld the front and rear axles. Uh, and I'll probably do that sometime this week before we go play. We're going to go on Sunday to go up to Iron Mountain. But I am pumped. I was getting ready to quit. I just... Um, if you spend so long on something... It can just, uh, I, I try to let my mind rest now and go back and just mull over things and be like, you know, what's going on here instead of just getting mad about things because you miss stuff and it was all my fault. It wasn't anything wrong with it. So the motor swap, as far as the difficulty of anything I've done is definitely like an 8 or a 9 out of 10. I had to do a ton of custom stuff. Um... And you know what? It was a lot of fun. Like, I've learned a lot. It's been a good experience. Uh, and if I had to do it again, I would. I know what to do now. Uh, I'm going to make out a list as, as the best, you know, most complete list. And you guys can help me if you've done this swap before of all the stuff that you're going to have to do to put a, ZJ, or a WJ 4 liter into an XJ. And to go from a distributor list to a distributor uh, driven motor. So, um, all that said, uh, let's crank it up. Let's move it. I'm going to clean up. I got stuff in my yard, everything I got rid of. And then we're going to do some videos of welding the rear axle. I've got some welders I'm going to do reviews of. Um, if you like what's going on here, guys, subscribe. Give me a like. I know it's been a while since I uploaded. That's going to change. Um, I just didn't want to video all this just minutia dealing with this thing so um awesome i'm pumped let's get to it